Welcome, well you're at home with Jim and Joy and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We know what a privilege that it is. Well, today we want to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And today we will have Patrick Keir on our show. He was on our show on Wednesday and today we'll have a follow-up show with him discussing the topic of helping those with memory challenges. And I think as we grow as we all grow older, we all have memory challenges. We do. And um, it's good to remember who we are and who we're not. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's right. the discovery and the beauty of growing that old. That always helps. I wanted to share that recently I was at a local parish here in, in Birmingham, St. Patrick's Parish in Birmingham. And uh, I was asked to come to be, to give a keynote address. It was a small group. Um, so got there early and sat in. There were other teachings taking place and people were giving testimony. I was there for about an hour and a half to two hours before I spoke. I was incredibly blessed mm. by, by the laity. By the laity. Uh, and so the whole theme was the sacredness of the human person, how it impacts the domestic church and society. So one woman gets up, married, she has three children, and she's just not sharing a testimony about how she was pregnant with her first child and complications, more complications, then the next thing you know, people are offering them options like abortion. Mm -hmm. And she was just giving the testimony, what that's like, the struggle that it is, and, and, and how she you know, stood her ground, never did that, would they do anything like that. And I was just there and saying, yes, this is great. These are our people, these are Catholic people. And, and then she shared that she and her husband, as well as some of the other people, it's a good age range, mm -hmm. young and, and some older, uh, how they're working with youth of the parish. It's just the kind of person you want to work with the youth of the parish. Right. Somebody said n no you know, to abortion. Although you can have people that said yes to abortion, that are forgiven mm -hmm. and set free. They're great witnesses too. So proud of her. So the lady gets up and shares this whole story about this woman in 1942 that became pregnant, what it was like in 1942 in out Alabama. Out of wedlock. Out of wedlock. And then she tells, and it winds up being about her husband, that she has the baby's place for adoption. He comes, and his name is like Tom. And now there's a Tom, there's a Tom, in the, another Tom in the family, grandchild Tom and great-grandchild Tom. Mm. I mean, it was a showstopper. You know, the influence of one person in somebody's life and what, what takes place. Uh, this other lady, you know, this before I speak, uh, is sharing about what's wrong with society is that we don't have parents, a mother and a father, you know, mm. and we used to have parents in the old days and they would, she talked, well, anyway, about disciplining your children. Yes. And that this would affect us. It was so simple, like mm -hmm. having a mom, a mom and a dad. And we know that not every family has a mom and a dad and some people are doing heroic stuff, but like that's the standard. Maybe right. we need to get back to that. And all talks like this, which they took my whole thing that I was going to speak about. <laughs> I had nothing to say when I was done. And I just wanted to say there's hope in the church. Yes. And there's a lot of tremendous lay people. Most of these people were Knights of Columbus and, and, and ambassadors for the Knights, the, the women. Uh, and then real quick, just the pastor that had his door slightly ajar. I knocked on his door, went in, had a great conversation with him. He left it ajar again when I left. I went in, had a conversation. And he was just open. He's saying, my door's open to the people There you here. go. So, God is renewing his church. Yes. God is renewing his people. He's going to renew vocations. He's going to renew the laity. And all together, we will build a new culture of life. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and today is Friday, and we have our guest Patrick Keir with us. And he's helping us with some solutions about helping those with memory challenges. And as we grow older, we all seem to encounter them. And we shouldn't be alarmed, we should manage them. And he has some helpful tools that um, will help us all, which will be wonderful. Well, Patrick, we want to welcome you back. Thank and we you. want you to give us a little overview of what we shared mm -hmm. about on Wednesday, of your journaling, and how beneficial it has been just in your life personally. Okay, well, one, th one of the things we spoke of, talked about is that there's more than just one item that helps with the memory. And all mine is from my own personal use that I have had struggled with and doing research. 
and it's you know it's diet and nutrition and exercise and meditation and and journaling like we're talking about yep. keeping notes type of thing and going back is one of the big thing the reminiscence seems to help more than anything yeah. going back in our lives 30 40 50 years and then it, it seems to retrain the brain to think more about today and yesterday and so like my family we were a very extensive family in Gary Indiana all Catholic all Irish if you if you went to mass there one of us or both of us so both of the altar boys would be us mm -hmm. you know that's yeah. how extensive yeah. it was it wasn't unusual to come home and I can remember these things still I can come home and see my mother and sister Marie Daniels her cousin at the coffee table yeah. having sipping tea mm -hmm. and eating apple pie you know mm -hmm. I can remember my father with Father Kennedy our pastor in the backyard sipping beer mm -hmm. you know and looking at uh, <laughs> some other things out of the Chicago Sun Times they're mm -hmm. studying the horse races of course yeah. But I can remember that, but sometimes it's like when you're coming out of this grocery store, you know, where's the car at? Mm -hmm. And I have to force myself. When I go in the grocery store, I make sure I turn around and look and see where it's going to be. Right. Yeah. It sounds Not a bad idea. It sounds strange, but it, no, it, it, it. It, 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 it isn't to 9 million people in the United States that have that same yeah. problem. Right. That's right. Yeah. But even in the, in the parking lot of grocery stores, most have numbers at the top, right? right? So you can know what lane or what aisle you parked right. in if you could just remember that when you get out, right? <laughs> um, but sometimes you down. can write it down, yeah, that's right? right? Yeah. That's where that little journal yeah, comes helpful. Yeah. If you just have a little notepad with you right. and write it down so you can say, okay, there it is. It helps to have the key thing that you yeah, that's click. The, the clicker is very alarm helpful. Twice. It'll yes. tell you where it's at. It'll call so, you. <laughs> yeah, now, uh, now we need to make a car that calls us. <laughs> Here I am, right? That would be helpful. But share with us <laughs> more why what you are proposing, you know, writing, journaling, rem rem reminiscence, how it's helping you. Okay, well, you know, again, mostly it's come from research and my own self using it, but there's the three things. One is the note taking. So you remember what you did today, and basically that's the journaling or a daily planner or a calendar or any some, something that you write down. And I write everything. What I have for breakfast, go to mass, who said mass mm -hmm. on, on the, that morning. You know, anything that happened to me during that day, I write it down because the next day, I, I, sometimes right. I don't remember it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I need, by looking back, I can say, oh, Father Jack said Mass yesterday. And maybe then I can talk to my wife about what, what the Mass was about or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so. Speak to us about, you, you mentioned the component of prayer, which is specific in some ways, but can be more broad. But, but speak to us about prayer. What do you mean by prayer? Just being still and knowing that God is God or particular pious devotions that we have in the Catholic Church or oh. expand for us on prayer and how that could be helpful. Well, you know, I've always been taught the rosary is the most powerful prayer. Actually, I went to the seminary, the Carmelite Seminary, for a brief time after, during, uh, after high school. And that's where you start learning really about the rosary from, the, from those teachers and priests. But and what I, my, what come, happens to me, when I talk to somebody about it, they say I don't have time to say the rosary. Mm -hmm. I mean it takes 20 minutes or an hour to say mm -hmm. a rosary. And my point is from what I see, you don't have to say the whole rosary every time, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is just saying the three Hail Marys, mm -hmm. saying one bead for the Father, one bead for the Jesus, and one bead for the, the Holy Ghost is a grace just involved in that. Yeah. And then you can say a decade of rosary at a time. You don't have to say rosary, you know, just. It, the important thing is to say something, yes. I think, you know, and ask yeah. God to help. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's got to have some help with this. Right, yeah. and ask our Blessed Mother to pray for us. <laughs> and you, you well, think... She's, she's the special one, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you keep mentioning that images, seeing, visual, and not that everything works the same for all people. Right. But, I mean, the decades of the rosary, the mysteries of the rosary, right. uh, you know, the glorious mysteries, yeah. the sorrowful mysteries, and, and yeah. so on. They're all different images and stories and whatever. So, I mean, yeah. you, it, it's incredible, not just the words that you're saying, but that you're seeing the story, the salvation story, what's yeah. going on. Yeah. And then you're also being accompanied, if you do it the way John Paul II said, right. with Our Lady. He said, right. now, now look at these mysteries with the Mother of Our Lord. Right. And I think that's really important to see the images, to get the history, and to have community. Yeah. with Mary, because that's important in terms of remembrance as well. Right. So the, it's the most powerful, one of the most powerful prayers, the grace, yeah. but also the visual thing is right, there. The visual. And the story and the touching. Mm -hmm. See, some people are very kinesthetic or mm -hmm. touching wise. They learn from touching. That's where the advantage of a rosary. You know, I'm t constantly playing with the mm -hmm. rosary, I mm -hmm. guess, my Joyce yeah. would say, my wife. But I've always, it gives me solace. You yes. know, it just gives me some 
let me think and stop for a minute and let me think about today. Mm -hmm. You know, I happen to have a rosary that has the mysteries on it, and the, the our father beads are actually images. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can actually look at the yeah. images mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a dual thing because one of the keys of memory loss, forgetfulness, it can be just anxiety. <laughs> and so like you say, a lot of people say meditation. Well, I guess there's Christian Catholic meditation. But the rosary is a beautiful meditative prayer. And you will find peace. If you could just get some, a degree of, of peace and, and be in the Lord, I bet you remember a little bit better. Plus, you've got all the images, all the stories. Right. And I don't know exactly how this works, because you keep saying that the findings are finding, even if it's something a long time away. Like you say, put the pictures in your journal of two years, 20 years. We're talking about thousands of years, right. 2,000 years right. ago. How's that going to help me now? I don't know. Uh -huh. But by God's grace and by God's power, and it also triggers other things in the brain or calling forth stuff. Because all this stuff is there. The problem right. is getting it out. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. And uh, like you're saying, when you see it, other memories come up. It may be not even be about that, but if something else starts going in your mind, you start thinking, oh, wh where I got this rosary from, maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know, mm -hmm. or yeah. something like that. So it, yeah. it, that's a constant yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, I've, it's, it's an amazing thing when, I guess I, I'm a lapsed Catholic. I was a lapsed Catholic. I'm not lapsed now or I wouldn't be on the shelf. Right? <laughs> I was a lapsed Catholic. I'm not now. I'm really doing pretty oh, well. Now with you Joy's tell on. me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but I was a lapsed Catholic, and I was serving as an Episcopal priest, got involved in the rescue movement and so on, and got involved with a lot of Catholics who were rescuing. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of I'm getting memories back. Yeah. Bishop Austin Vaughn from New York, great bishop, auxiliary bishop, jailed numerous times. Um, so I was hanging out with all these Catholics, as well as evangelicals and Pentecostals, mm -hmm. going to jail. And they were all praying the rosary. Well, I, I didn't pray the rosary. But I was being drawn to the rosary through their prayers, their devotion. And I would hear the rosary. And, and then I spent some time in solitary confinement in Wichita, Kansas, 17 days in solitary confinement for saving seven, eight, nine month old babies that were being killed. So wow, I put me in wow. it. Had a lot of time to think, you know, and there. And I was there, and this is memory. And it's, it's like the Lord said to me at some point as I was there in this little cell, um, what do you think mothers do when they're dying and they have a five-year-old son? That was my mother. Oh, wow. She died when I was five. Oh, no. I said, I said, well, what do they do? So the Lord said, your mother prayed the rosary, and she prayed for you and, like, set you apart for God. Now, did this happen? You don't have to believe that. It may have just been me. Oh, oh. But it was the rosary thing and the rosary thing. And so then, mm -hmm. then, you know, I started thinking about the Catholic Church more. And then I would go, you know, even into mm -hmm. this sanctuary here before I was a Catholic, or whatever, and, and people would have their rosary. It's just the sound of the rosaries, right, the sound. The click. <laughs> but this brought me back, I think, to my, mo wow, to my mother. Uh, my father would pray, the clicking sound, mm -hmm. all this. And all of a sudden, like, stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. So I don't know scientifically how to explain that or psychologically to explain that, but it right. verifies to me what you're saying. The powerful things that have happened in the past that you didn't know can impact you now. Right. And, you know, and here I am. And I'm sure so for some of you here, people here that know, knew Mother Angelica, mm -hmm. you know, just thinking in the past, some of these guys said they knew her from the beginning, you know. Right. And so just them thinking about when, when Mother was here and how they all started and built all this to, together, yeah. mm -hmm. that's got to be an important memory mm -hmm. for them. And so it may help them with yesterday's memory. I right. often think about, you know, when I shut my eyes, sometimes I just shut my eyes and I think, and I see joy, even when my eyes are shut. But then I recall my mother as best I can, my father, right. yeah. my sister, who's the others, and they start coming to me because I've experienced them. Mm. Imagine when Peter and Paul, Mary Magdalene, shut their eyes. What they saw. They right. saw him. Yep. They saw Jesus, and all that would come yeah. back, as well as the spirit. And when you shut your eyes and you think of the people that mm. are so meaningful in your life, their right. thoughts, what they saw, what Mary saw when she shut right. her eyes, you know? And so this all comes into play. It's so good to be a human being holistically right. and to be touched by the senses, right, right? of, of yeah. sight and, 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 and yeah. tactile things and, and uh, seeing and writing. And, and that's what the yeah. Catholic Church calls us to. We're comprehensive, right. we're comprehensive human beings. Mm -hmm. And God wants to touch everything and redeem everything. Right. And maybe we'll remember better. I hope so. And, you know, everybody's so focused on today. You know, mm -hmm. what's going to happen today? What am I going to have for lunch? Right. Where am I going? What happened yesterday? I got a flat tire. Mm -hmm. And don't take the time even to go back and, and meditate or mm -hmm. say the prayers. Yeah. yeah. And that's a challenge yeah. for people. You know, they're so busy. Yeah. To do that. Right. Yeah. And like even now, like in your journal, 
you have to write things down. Well, there's a whole generation, they write nothing down. Right. My daughter's like, no. Mom, you're so old school, they'll say to me. Yeah. Just put it on your phone. phone well, right. I don't like that. Right. I mean, no. I have a phone, I have notes, I have yeah. a calendar on my phone. I don't like that, that's not me. Yeah. And so I'll do my journal and go into my day and right. that's just how I learn, that's how I go forward in my right. life. The problem is, is I, now I don't know what this is about, and somebody should psychoanalyze me. I never like looking back over my year. I'm just like, I got a job to do, I got to stay focused and go <laughs> right forward. I, I can't, I get exhausted. Hmm. If I, even like if I look back what I did three months ago, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I can't. It takes like the life out of me for my day. Right. Yeah. Sounds like you're overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I don't know, it's like I can't. It's, I can't, I just gotta, I, it's like, yeah. God gives me grace for the day. Yeah, that's and good. by the end of that day, it is my job to use up every ounce of grace that he gave me. Well, right. And I'll get new grace in the morning. Yeah. Yep. Memory loss can be a blessing to some degree. I'm not talking about the serious <laughs> stuff. Okay, right? Does God really want us to know every single thing? You know, I mean, does re do we really want to go back and replay everything? No. I think that's yeah. normal. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's that's the opposite side of this picture. I think right. Right. Probably right. that doesn't like, help I either. Don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. I've never yeah. had that problem, yeah. so I don't know. But well, it's yeah. beautiful. Jim will ask me questions, and I'll say, "Quit googling my brain. Right. I don't have all this memory." In memory, it's, everything. Yeah, yeah I can't. Yeah. Or you, you have those days when you're maybe a little foggy, and you're, you know you have the answer, mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of time. It's going to come up like right. the computer. Just give right. me a couple of minutes. It will come up, right? right? And, yeah. and it does. And my wife Joyce is like that. Even, we've only been visited here like three or four times. She knows what, somebody in the audience was just asking where the nearest hotel is. Right. She knows where it is and what street it's on. Right. <laughs> I don't remember that. We hotel. need to have her on. I mean, so <laughs> we only got about a minute uh, left. Okay. What's your hope for your, the work that you're doing, for what you're putting forth? For, the, for our viewing audience uh, Again, today. to help people that are having a struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, that they don't have to, to come and buy a journal or anything. They can th get a calendar like you have, mm -hmm. or it's important to have the album, I think, or the old photographs out because it seems to retrain the brain. Mm -hmm. If not, like I say, a baseball glove or a doll yeah. or mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra singing, you know? Right. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for being thank with you us today. Us. And yeah. you're a delightful person and I've learned quite a lot just listening and, and thinking through how we can be better uh, people who remember better memory mm -hmm. um, so thanks for being with us we'll be right back there's plenty more to come please don't go away Good. Thank you. Welcome back. Well, in a minute, Father Joseph's going to join us, but first we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, what's the news from Rome today? Well, hi, Jim, and hi, Joy, and it's good to be with you again this week. And I, I have some news of an upcoming papal trip. In fact, tomorrow, March 30th, Pope Francis is due to depart for Morocco. He's accepted an invitation from King Mohammed VI and from the bishops of that African nation. Now, he's only going to be there overnight, so Saturday and uh, Sunday night and, and Sunday day. Excuse me, Saturday, Saturday night and Sunday day. And um, he will be stopping and visiting the cities of, of Rabat and of Casablanca. This is the 28th foreign apostolic trip for Pope Francis and uh, to a Muslim nation. Now, it's only the second time, though, that a pope has gone to Morocco. The first pope was, as you can probably imagine, John Paul II. He went there in 1985 to kind of strengthen Muslim and Christian ties. Now, among the events on the pope's calendar, um, he's going to be received, of course, by the king. He eventually meets members of the government, the diplomatic corps, uh, other politicians and officials. He will pay a visit to the tomb of uh, the Pope will pay a visit to the tomb of King Mohammed V. He's due to visit a migrant center in the Caritas offices. Then on Sunday, he's going to someplace in the countryside to visit a social service center. 
and Sunday will also be marked by a lunch with the bishops, by a meeting with men and women religious in the Cathedral of Rabat, and then the last event of the day will be Mass in the Cathedral of Rabat, and then he returns to Rome on Sunday night. Now, interestingly enough, this is the eighth Muslim-majority country that Pope Francis has visited in his brief uh, pontificate. But what's important to know is that Morocco considers itself a key ally in the world fight against radical, um, radical Islam. And the king himself has spoken out many, many times on radical Islam, on the language of those people. Now, Morocco, as I said, the eighth country. The others are, um, the Pope was welcomed in 2014 by King Abdullah to Jordan. Shortly after that, he visited Bethlehem in the United Nations recognized state of Israel. And then in September 2014, he visited Albania. November 2014, Turkey. November 2015, Central African Republic. And then in the April of 2017, Cairo, and December 2017, Bangladesh. So another real interesting trip on the books for Pope Francis. We will eagerly await the news from Morocco. So time's up. Back to you. Joan, thanks so much, so much. I wasn't aware of, of the Holy Father's no. work and an incredible That's ambassador incredible. he is in the midst of his own age and mm -hmm. health and well-being. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's going all over, may God grant him success in the healing that needs to take Amen. place between Muslims and Christians, all the nations that he's going to. God bless Amen. him. Amen. Amen. Father, your thoughts about anything? You know, when you it's were talking you. about the rosary and the significance of the rosary, I couldn't help but think back. I was back in Iowa a few years ago talking with a cousin of mine, and she said, you know, our, my, our mother was dying, and we were all there, and we had EWTN on, and my mother was in a coma for like two or three days. Mm -hmm. But we had EWTN on, and the rosary was on, and she was mouthing the words. Mm -hmm. So even in the coma, yes. she still had that memory, mm -hmm. right? And like you were saying, there's grace there in our prayer, and how beautiful it is to have those beautiful prayers, the angelic salutation, mm -hmm. right, that we repeat in the Hail Mary. Yes. And then I was thinking, too, uh, Father Lambert Green, and who we knew here in the area, he lived to be 101 years old. He was the editor for the Observatory Romano That's English right. edition right. for many years. But he had this just keen <laughs> memory and intellect up until the end. Mm -hmm. But he was one who was always learning more. He was yes. always studying. He was always, every day, he was doing something to have something new and fresh. And I think that's an important point too, especially spiritual realities mm -hmm. that we're bringing grace into it. We're yeah. studying, we're trying to understand God and it's exercising our memory uh, faculty as well. Yeah, no Father, that's a great point. And cause we, oh, we have mm -hmm. to be, cause God's constantly revealing himself to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, even last week our, our deacon preached and he preached on the transfiguration and he said, you know, how many times I've heard a sermon on the transfiguration. Mm -hmm. And he said, Moses will be Moses and you will be you. And I thought, that's the truth. That's yeah. the transfiguration. And it just, mm -hmm. and it was just constant growing, constant changing. That's why we need to keep it on EWTN mm -hmm. because we are constantly being catechized. We're constantly right. being renewed, hopefully mm -hmm. being conformed and transformed mm -hmm. into the image and likeness of God. Not that just that one moment where I profess faith in Christ. Yeah. Right. And even if I read the Bible or I get my sacraments at the church, it's a daily encounter of that intimacy. We can never exhaust the spring. You know, one of the yes. fathers of the church said that if we could, then we'd be thirsty, right? We couldn't have any hope, but we can never exhaust the spring, which is the gospel, which is the life of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. There's always something new. There's always new depths that we can go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? It's the old and the new together, the very mm -hmm. familiar for thousands of years and the liturgy that's all in there so that somebody's not very conscious but starts mouthing mm -hmm. the prayers mm -hmm. and then the yeah. grace of God moving in the midst. It's something mm -hmm. that we could all be a part of, something that our Catholic faith really does bring to us. Right. Father, close us in a prayer and a blessing. Father, we ask you to bless our memory faculty, which is really a little trace of your uh, eternity, that we can remember the past, we can project the future, and we can look toward our home with you forever in eternity. Help especially those who struggle yeah. with memory problems and memory loss. Help them to know you more deeply, to love you, 
And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is so wonderful for all of us to be together in this way, to have this community together. Please keep it on EWTN. You're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.